just like everything else when we're trying to write programs and, and work with data, when we start working with a database, we really need to think about what it is that we're trying to accomplish and exactly what the database is going to do for us. Now, in some cases, if we only have a very little bit of data that we need to hold on to, putting that data into a text file and reopening the text file later on to get, the, to, get to the data might be a simpler approach. But in, in a lot of the cases, eventually you end up getting more and more data that you're trying to keep track of, and you eventually need to start looking at a faster mechanism uh, for getting to the data as well as storing the data to make sure that it's in, uh, for example, it's encrypted or it's in, you know, protected and, and that we can get to it really, really quickly if there's 10,000 records that we're trying to get to. So before we get started on the actual uh, database layout, I want to explain a few concepts. And the best way to do this is to actually think about an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, when you go, most people know what Excel is. Um, it's just a, a word, uh, a way to manage data inside of a, a bunch of grids. So generally it's doing math or, you know, working with numbers. But you have this concept of columns, and, and this would be your, your different columns that you have in the, in the data. And then you have rows that you're dealing with this way. Now, in the concept of a database, and Excel really is a database, we would have multiple rows. So we, we just continue to come in and add more and more data elements to the, the spreadsheet. Um, obviously, when you first open it, you end up with a whole lot of cells. But um, the, the concept here is that if I'm storing uh, name and address, for example, I would come in here and say, uh, let's say this is Bob, and then this is Julie, and then we have their address here, and and so forth, and, and city, and state. All of the, the information in a row is one, in this example, is one, so a row equals one record. So when you're dealing with a row of data, you have a record that you're dealing with. Each column inside of the database table, they are columns, but we refer to those as fields. So all of these things, all of these different elements are referred to as a different field. So I would have a field for name, address, city, state, and zip, for example. The columns represent each record that we have. Now, in its simplest form, we have a list of information. Let's just think of, about a contacts table. So if we have a, a contacts table that we're trying to keep track of, of all of our customers in, we would have something that looks similar to this. And then we would have, let's just say, 10,000 rows or 10,000 records inside of the table, which represents 10,000 customers or 10,000 contacts. Now, in its simplest form, this has given us a way to manage that data. We can, instead of putting it in a text file and trying to figure out where we're putting it in the file and what kind of structure we're going to have on the file, we can just create a database table and throw all of this stuff into the database table. Now, there are a few concepts that I want to explain here. One of them is index. And all an index is is a way for me to help the database help me. So in other words, if I'm going to, if I know that I'm going to be searching for customers based on their name, then I would want to create a, an index, and I'm just going to call it, I usually start my indexes with I, but you can call them whatever you want. But I, let's say that we call this I contact primary. Now, this index, I'm telling it that I'm going to have this is the name, and then I'm just going to do it this way, and we'll say uh, we're going to create the index on the name field. Now, what this does is it tells the database that I want to be able to search on this particular field. So it creates an index on here so that if I come in and tell it to, it, and, and we're using SQL here, so SQL is the, pro, is the language that we're 
talking. Um, when I use query uh, SQL language, I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say select name from, and let's say that our table name is called contacts. And then you give it a where clause. And the where clause is where the index comes in. So I'm going to say where name is like and I'm going to do a single tick and I'm going to do a percent and a percent's a wild card character and I'm going to say Smith. Now what this is going to do is this is going to find me anybody that's name ends in the word Smith. Um, if I wanted to do it the opposite I could say or uh, name is and put Smith with a percent sign on the end and now I'm telling it I want to find everybody that starts with Smith or you can combine it any way you want but the the primary point here is that this where clause is using this field and that field is representing this particular field in the database and we have told the system that we want to index that so you can kind of think about it as the database now knows exactly where every one of the Smiths are so that when I do a uh, query like this, it can instantly give me the results. It doesn't have to look through every record in the database for anybody that starts with Smith because it has already gone in and ordered everything so that it's all in alphanumerical order and it knows exactly where everything is and can give it to me in a millisecond. So indexes are, are an extremely important thing to have in your tables and to understand where to put them. You don't want to put an index on every single field because then you just slow down the inserts that you have in the tables. Um, you, you really just want to have indexes on where you're going to actually be searching. Now the next thing I want to discuss and the last thing we're going to discuss is normalization. Now, what normalization is, is the ability for me, and when I'm thinking about this, the ability or, or the, the process that I go through to organize the data. Now, it's perfectly okay to create a database table that has the name, the address, the city, the state, the zip code, and, it, and it's perfectly okay for me to do this. I, I can create a table and maybe there's a reason for me to lay it out this way. But where normalization comes in is it actually allows me to do something like this. I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a table that has name. I'm going to have address. And then I'm going to, so this is going to be my contacts table. And then I'm going to create a field called zip ID. And then I'm going to create a new table called zip codes. And I'm going to have zip ID, zip code, zip, uh, city, and state, country, and so forth. Now, why did I do this? Well, if you think about it, if I'm dealing with a lot of contacts and they and they happen to be, you know, 10,000 of them in the same city, I am making my database table much larger than it needs to be because I'm duplicating the city, the state, and the zip code. And if I had country code in here, it would be duplicating that as well because every single record up here that we have in the, in the record table, every one of these records is going to duplicate the same city, state, and zip. Well, by converting that to a single zip ID, this is just an integer field, so it's much smaller than to have a character field that has to hold 50 characters. This is just, you know, four to eight, depending on the, the type of platform you're on. Um, but it, it allows me to have a much smaller table for my contacts, and then I only have the zip code in the table one time. So this is only in one time per city, state, and zip. So over here, when I put this in, I would have, for example, Bob and 2122 Freeman. And then I'd have 22. And then the system would then say, okay, well, look up 22 over here. And 22 would have, uh, you know, Stockbridge and Georgia and 302 whatever it is, 3-8, and United States. So 
it, it allows me to have one entry in the table over here. So I'm not quite sure why it just did that. Um, but it allows me to have one entry in the table to hold the city, state, and zip, and then it has a single smaller record over here per contact. Now, you, you have to be careful when you're using normalization because you don't really want to have too much normalization in the table. If you normalize too much, it, things get really complicated. And, and to show you, I want to show you that select query that we did a minute ago. Now what we're going to have is we're going to have select... And we're going to say name, address, city, state, zip code, and country. And we've got to tell it where we're going to get it from. So we're going to say from contacts. But now you got to remember that city, state, zip code, and county are not in contacts. They're in another table. So now we have to tell it to also work with zip code. And then we need to give it our where. So we're going to say where name equals Smith and we got to link the zip code. So we're going to say and contacts dot zip ID equals zip code dot my thing here is getting kind of crazy zip ID. And so what this does is this links my my contacts table whatever its zip id is together with my zip code table and now i have access to all those fields so you can see just by doing that one normalization the select query that we're going to have to start using to be able to combine all this data is a little bit more complicated than it used to be and, and another side effect of this is that it doesn't run quite as fast when you're having to do multi-select queries versus just selecting everything in a single table so there is a downside to doing a lot of normalization but there is a a, a nice upside too um, for example, if I misspell the city, I can correct the city, and everybody that's linked to that city now has the new spelling. I don't have to go look up every single customer that I had used. So there's a lot of upside, a little bit of downside. Um, and when I do say that it's a little slower, it, it's just a little bit slower. It's not massively so. So in, in most cases, you're going to, going to want to do a little bit of normalization. Um, now, the last thing that I want to talk about is the, the links in these queries. So when I do a, a query like we just did and we have contacts and we tell it that we want to have all the contacts where that zip ID is equal between these two tables, what that query will actually do is let's say that I have a contact over here that has a zip ID of 2. And over here, I do not have a zip ID 2. So there is no zip ID of 2 inside of this table. Well, what will happen in that select query that I just showed you is you will not see the contact record because it won't be able to link up the zip code and therefore it won't show the contact record. It won't select it. So that causes you to have to get into some different types of queries that you might be using. So um, the, I just wanted to mention that. I'm not going to go into all the detail on inner and outer joins and all that kind of stuff, but just understand that when you're working with multiple tables, when you normalize the tables and you're looking for data that's in both tables, you need to be cognizant of the actual query that you're running because it will determine the results that are actually coming back uh, when you execute it.